I'm Louise Minchin and welcome to the showcase special of Continuing the Conversation, a programme from the British Menopause Society and ITN Business. The fact that the menopause is now openly discussed in the predominantly male hallowed corridors of government shows just how far the conversation has come, with the all-party parliamentary group corroborating the recommendation from the British Menopause Society that women should undergo a health check at age 45 to specifically discuss any symptoms that could be linked to the menopause came the admission that still more needs to be done to help manage this life event that has been known to threaten relationships and careers. The symptoms I experienced were chronic anxiety, sleeplessness, fatigue, hot, hot sweats, and I generally felt really rather rubbish. Depression, crying, hot and cold sweats, and um, Oh yeah, forgetfulness, sorry. <laughs> the most important thing is that women have access to up-to-date, accurate information so they know what to look out for. Not all women will experience severe menopausal symptoms, but most women will experience something. And if they have the information to know what's happening, that puts them in a good place to know what to look out for and to seek help when required. The wide range of symptoms that can occur often leave women blindsided especially when they happen earlier or later than the average age of 51. For a lot of women, you know, menopause arrives with a very sudden decline in brain function, which can be quite alarming. And the reason is, is just because although the hormones that are declining during menopause are traditionally known as sex hormones, they actually have an impact across our whole bodies. So when it comes to your brain, estrogen is actually really, really important for producing all the energy that your brain needs and the brain needs a lot of energy to function so when your oestrogen levels go down that basically means your brain doesn't have the energy it needs and you start forgetting things you get that classic fogginess and that can be a real problem. Hot flushes is the one that people are expecting often what they're not expecting are the mood changes so low mood anxiety difficulty concentrating brain fog that we hear more about and often that's what really worrying when they don't realize that's hormone related some women say to me I thought I was getting a early dementia or thought I was going crazy. Joint aches is really common and um, palpitations, sometimes headaches. And the other important ones to look out for are later on. So women often get vaginal and bladder symptoms. This can be a few years after the periods have stopped. And so it's understandable that they might not link that with hormonal changes, but it's again really important to know what to look out for. Initially, I didn't really realize that I was menopausal. Um, I didn't want to get old and like many, many nurses nationally, we were fighting a pandemic and so I thought the anxiety that I was experiencing was um, having to up my game as a leader and look after all this staff and the public. So I had no idea that the hot flushes I thought were due to the PPE. I thought I was hot because of my anxiety. My anxiety I thought was because we were in a pandemic. Um, and then the memory loss um, started and the jumbled up words. Um, and I used to be able to write back to front. One day I ended up in a very senior um, nurse's office and I thought I'd failed. 70% of the NHS staff are female and 65% of our workforce are female. Some of these ladies have worked at our organisation for most of their nursing and their careers. So if they were to leave because they were unsupported, felt that they couldn't um, conduct their roles anymore, we would be using such a huge, valuable part of our workforce. All of that experience, all of that knowledge gone. So we had to look after them. We, we needed to retain that workforce. More and more employers are waking up to the fact that with many of us working for longer, menopause will have an impact on half of those workers who are sometimes, like Pamela, senior people within their environment. Companies need to have policies and strategies in place to support and maintain this valuable group of experienced employees. We did a whole piece around education and training. So we trained our managers, male and female, on the menopause and the impact of that on their teams. And then we had awareness sessions. So we did training and awareness sessions for those as well, which were incredibly well attended. So that education piece was also very, very key. 
Aside from that, we put in menopause champions. We advertise their numbers and they're available throughout the day to just contact, say, I'm having a chat, I'm having a bad day. Is there somebody that I could speak to? Boots UK, as one of the country's best known high street pharmacies and retailers, is available seven days a week for anyone who needs a chat. I have seen a huge change in the number of people coming into a pharmacy to ask about advice on symptoms of the menopause. Boots are currently offering products and services for over 40 symptoms. Hello. Hi. 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 The company also has an online menopause hub to help find products and treatments for any stage. But as an employer with a mainly female workforce, it's leading the way in ensuring a high rate of retention by supporting its own staff with training and learning modules. We've done lots of panels where people share their own experiences and we've had experts come in and, and help them understand what might be going on and that's open to everybody. Uh, we have a network set up where people can have peer-to-peer -peer support. Boots has shown just how seriously they take this issue by being one of the first companies to join Gen M, an organisation set up to help brands better understand the menopause with advice in several areas, including workplace policies and signposting. Their commitment has been rewarded with menopause-friendly workplace accreditation. It really does show that real change can be brought if we have the right perspective, the right vision, the right attitude and the right purpose. Some companies need a bit more help to get the message. There's some women out there that are really struggling in the workplace because businesses maybe don't understand how to treat employees that are going through this, they don't understand the symptoms, they don't understand how to talk about it openly and positively. The Peninsula Group provides a wealth of services, including employment law to many thousands of businesses around the country. With the number of employment tribunals citing menopause rapidly rising, it says having those conversations and learning to support employees through it is a vital part of future-proofing any business. The risk of a discrimination claim for a business um, is immense because the, the compensation is uncapped. So it, an award for such a case could be absolutely fundamentally crippling for, for a business. It's a different journey for everybody. So. You know, what I've said to clients is, is try to remain a little bit open-minded because, you know, no two people are, are the same. One of Peninsula's clients, animal charity Blue Cross, spotted the need to address the issue and now has robust menopause policies in place. Um, ultimately, it's really important that our people thrive in the work environment. If we don't do that, we can't help our pets and people. So we want a happy, healthy workforce mm. and this is part of it. If someone is coming to you asking for support, take that seriously, understand it, get to the bottom of it, and educate your management team and your workforce. I've had friends who've given up their job because they just can't cope with the pressures and the anxiety and that they're not supported in any way. So it's a real desire of mine to become involved in this and retain all that knowledge for the business. Two-year-old risk advisory company Partners and made a menopause-inclusive approach a core part of its progressive outlook with an online information hub, training for line managers and a relaxed atmosphere where no topic is off-limits. I think it's really important that if our employees know about the menopause, they know how it can be experienced by others, they can start to understand and listen and have empathy for whether it's their wife, whether it's their partner, whether it's the colleague that they spend a huge amount of their waking day working alongside. This forward-thinking approach is shared with their clients, helping other businesses to look after their employees' needs. Your people are your greatest assets. So making sure your greatest asset is happy, healthy and productive is, is, is a great thing for the individuals and for the business. And that means creating an environment where the menopause is openly discussed. It's just a conversation, it's not a whispered thing in the ladies' toilets anymore. Um, it's an open conversation we can have in the office without feeling embarrassed about it. Leading the conversation at professional services company Accenture are the Menno Warriors. Menno Warriors does a number of things. First and foremost, it's a forum for people to talk about how they feel. 
Um, secondly, it's a lobbying body. We lobby the company for things. And I think thirdly, we are, um, I would say an education and change agent. We try to talk about why this needs to be widely understood and accepted. It's helped change the culture for people like Sarah, who was on the verge of quitting her job. I'd have this, I can only describe as volcanic heat erupt from me, making me think that, oh my God, everyone can see me, I'm red, I'm sweating. And the brain fog came down and I couldn't remember any of the things that I wanted to say, couldn't remember names and I just went blank. And that is a mortifying situation to find yourself in. We've moved from a point of nobody saying and if somebody did, everybody would be very awkward, to hopefully a place where women who are going through it feel that they can be open about it. And secondly, that we've got a much better understanding of the support that's required to help. We have more women now to senior leadership, and if we truly want equality and equity at diversity of all levels, there needs to be more recognition and understanding of what the impact that the menopause has on women. At Nat West Group, talking about the menopause is something it wants to normalise after having a very difficult time when early menopause was mistaken for pregnancy, Lorna Taylor is using her experiences to help others. She now runs drop-in cafes as a champion and spokesperson for women's health, creating a space for people to talk. And I think that's the word, to normalise it, because every single woman, biological woman in the world, will go through this at one stage in their life or another. You know, it might be young like myself or even younger, you know, that happens, or, or a bit older. And to know that they've got all these things out there to support and help them. They will be experiencing difficult, different physical and mental challenges as they go through their day-to-day -day life. And we find that it's really important to be supporting colleagues with that and their partners um, and their families to just support them to be able to bring the best of themselves to work. NatWest Group have also recently partnered with Peppy Health, who are world leaders in providing support for women during menopause. Their employees will have free access to the app. In the UK, uh, they will get access to highly personalised one-to-one -one menopause experts. So this is uh, both through chat, so much like WhatsApp, direct access with an expert, and also unlimited video appointments. So this is where you actually get to talk face to face with a menopause expert. And then this is then backed up by a whole host of digital content, which ranges from uh, videos to podcasts to articles, all written by our clinical in-house team. A lower tech, but no less effective approach has been taken by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which helps people get their money back if they've lost it through financial service firm failures. Open Air Walks with Mental Health First Aiders makes for open conversation on anything and everything, including the menopause. I believe it's hugely important to have an open, inclusive culture where female colleagues can share their challenges around the menopause and to raise awareness for the whole organisation because we believe people work better when they can be themselves. Thanks everybody for, for joining uh, this workshop on menopause. Additional support, opportunities to talk, paid time off for medical appointments, virtual GP services, just general flexibility and inclusivity are some of the benefits that have won FSCS awards for being the fourth most inclusive employer. There has been a couple of times that I've broken down at work, um, but the time has been taken out to talk to me, you know, get me back on you know, track. Just listen to me really, and that's been important. We've had some workshops, some great workshops, which have been really informative. We've signed up and committed to the Workplace Menopause Pledge, which is really important to, to show both to our people and to the outside world that this is a topic that affects everybody in one way or another. FSCs have been great. They're, um, they're having an open dialogue about the menopause. They're really um, demystifying um, issues around the menopause. I think most importantly, it's just they're talking about it. Sam Nelson Edwards was amazed when her workplace turned out to be so open to having that conversation. It's a big surprise to me that the workplace is the place that I found the help and the, the support that I needed, but it's been fantastic. Education about the menopause has played a key role in helping many of the Aldermore Group's employees to feel comfortable at work. 
42% of Aldermore's workforce are females aged 40 or over. Uh, that means around four out of 10 colleagues at any one time could be going through perimenopause or the menopause. Hello everyone, how are you today? They've introduced a fun and active way to improve the health of their staff, keeping them both physically and mentally well. That's great, keep it up everyone, well done. Now we're going to take the arms up above the head as we raise the knee. Menno Health has helped Aldermore to support their employees by arranging these online, convenient, half-hour sessions that offer some support, some education, Q&A because everybody needs to be able to talk about menopause. And we've already had some incredible feedback about how people feel supported, that they don't feel that they're going through this time on their own, and they can even support their colleagues if they're not going through menopause themselves. It's just as important, it will affect everyone. Sam was given 11 weeks of support sessions and was able to get practical help as a result. Through those sessions um, and understanding about what was happening to me, I was able to go to, the, go to my own GP, ask about HRT, and that has turned around um, my life. Hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, is the most effective treatment currently available for controlling menopausal symptoms. It's still not as accessible as it should be for those who can take it, but it's often talked about as a one-size-fits-all solution for everyone. This is definitely not the case. It is really important that each woman works out for herself the benefits against the risks. It's not perfect, and there is known to be that association with increased risk of breast cancer with long-term use. However, the risk is small and it's just balancing the benefits against the risks for each woman. I would prefer to make sure that we work on education for women, that women are given choices and that women don't feel under pressure, say, to have HRT. There is a large group of women out there who are not given the choice. Susan Duty was successfully treated for breast cancer in 2018, but then fell headlong into the menopause. The brain fog was still there, the low moods were still there, I was getting worse migraines than usual, and hot flashes were coming on 24 a day. It was just an absolute nightmare. Cancer treatment can lead to early menopause, which means living with the symptoms for longer. But people diagnosed with oestrogen-dependent cancers like breast and ovarian may not be able to have HRT because of the link between oestrogen levels and cancer growth. Although the menopause is now openly discussed, alternatives to HRT have not been given equal consideration. I feel like a lot of the emphasis has been on HRT. You know, it's like the, the, the magic ticket for a positive life post-menopause and you know, that's not available to some of us. You feel a little bit like you are left out of the loop somehow, as though you don't, you know, you don't count. And I think it's so important because I am not the only person who has breast cancer. Not everybody wants to take HRT, and even those women who can't take HRT should not be left feeling that their lives are going to fall apart because HRT is apparently the only option to manage menopause. It's just not like that at all. Some people prefer a more holistic approach to managing the menopause, and it's been proved that careful weight management and maintaining a healthy diet can help to reduce the severity of common symptoms. Studies have shown that healthier diets like Mediterranean style diets can help to reduce the severity of common symptoms during the menopause. So things like hot flushes, night sweats, and even low mood. Um, and by healthier diets, that's diets that typically contain a lot of plant foods. So um, things like whole grains, fruit and vegetables, beans and pulses. These diets also contain a higher proportion of healthier, unsaturated fats from foods like oily fish and lean meats, which can influence other aspects of the menopause. So for example, reductions in bone density, also things like blood cholesterol levels going up and uh, blood pressure and also weight. And so it is really important therefore to, to think about what we eat. And, um, an easy way to do that actually is just to measure your waist circumference so you can see weight creeping on in that area 
much more quickly than if you jump up a whole dress size or a skirt size. There are many other options that don't involve taking HRT, and with Anne's support, Susan has found a way to manage her life. I'm taking medication to cut down my hot flushes. I am reading a lot about self-help guides to help manage my symptoms. I'm going off for bone density scans to keep an eye on the uh, development of potential osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can be a side effect of cancer treatment, but primarily affects postmenopausal women caused by a drop in oestrogen levels. It was a massive shock. Um, I, I can't, I'm really hugely extraordinary because I just felt that I was the only person in the world at my age that had something like this. Corinne was diagnosed with osteoporosis 11 years ago, a condition that develops over time, weakening the bones. She had no symptoms until she had a fall, resulting in seven vertebral fractures. Sitting down is not at all comfortable because I've lost a lot of height and now I'm very compressed in my upper body. The Royal Osteoporosis Society are trying to highlight better public awareness around the condition, which would lead to earlier diagnosis, especially amongst post-menopausal women. Help is out there, but it can be a postcode lottery. They've devised an online risk checker to reach as many people as possible. Uh, this is going to be available on the Royal Osteoporosis Society's website. Uh, this is about letting everybody know uh, that there are certain factors which can predict your osteoporosis risk. And it doesn't take very long to put them into the computer program and the algorithm gives you back uh, your risk profile. There are tablets that you can take and you can take them sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly. There are treatments that are an injection under the skin and then there are treatments that are infusion as well as some of the sort of more basic things are covered so making sure that calcium and vitamin D is covered making sure that people are doing appropriate exercise. Exercise is central to how Corinne now manages her condition. The way I think about my condition now as to the time of diagnosis is very, very different. Now I lift a lot of weights, I do a lot of running and exercise classes, that type of thing, really consider my nutrition. And I am absolutely firmly of the belief that although I've got this for the rest of my life, it doesn't need to define my life. Weight-bearing exercise is not only known to help increase bone density, scientists also claim it can help to slow down the rate at which we age, while menopause has the opposite effect. There's some really, really good and strong research to show that exercise does actually improve your cellular health and most importantly, reverse your biological age. And the way it does this is it basically creates a little bit of energy stress in your cells. Now we often think of stress as psychological stress, which is a bad thing, but when it comes to energy stress in your cells, it's actually good to have a little bit of stress because what it does is it switches on a lot of repair processes that almost kickstart your cells into looking after themselves again um, and in reversing any damage that's been had. The menopause happens because we age, but neither age nor the menopause stop Vicky Watson Foreman from taking on a role usually aimed at younger people, an apprenticeship with gas distribution company Cadent Gas. She was encouraged to do so directly because of this supportive environment with a woman in Cadent Network and strong menopause support policies in spite of a predominantly male team to work with. Being part of some of those groups actually gave me probably the thought and the trust and I spoke to a couple of mentors which actually helped me to actually believe in myself to actually go, you can do this. It's not as difficult as you think it is and I know that the lads that have supported me out on the patch, if I phoned them and I had an issue and I was out by myself, they'd all turn around and help me. So we've had lots of men in our team in, in Cadent who wanted to understand. Uh, and that's kind of created an environment where it feels not too uncomfortable to have those conversations. Senior Director Dave Moon sponsors the Women in Cadent Network. As the father of a 12-year-old daughter, he recognises the support women need at different stages of their reproductive lives. I wanted to get involved in Women in Cadent to make a difference in our workplace to help other people's daughters and sisters and mothers and everything else. Men are a crucial part of the conversation and are keen to be part of it. We need to make sure that the men in our business understand how they can support women 
um, uh, you know, day to day. I've got a wife, I've got a mother, I've got a daughter, I've got aunties and uncles, I've got work colleagues. If I can't understand them and what they're going through, then I'm not a very good friend, brother or, or, or father. Am I? Insurance company AXA is an accredited, menopause-friendly employer. Here that means open discussions, comfortable work clothing, plus flexible and hybrid working options to manage symptoms. It also means making sure men are paying attention to the issue. It's incredibly important for men to understand the menopause better, I think. So the coffee mornings, the meetings that we have to discuss the menopause, it's really, really refreshing because I can sit there as somebody who is eager to learn more and it's, it's a safe space. People can talk about things, they can talk about things as much or as little as they are comfortable doing. I know that I can come away from those meetings knowing more than I did before and understanding more about what it actually feels like to go through this and exactly how that impacts in the workplace. This isn't just a women's issue. The men in our workplace are brothers, uncles, fathers, husbands, and it's important that we can help inform and educate them too. The Work 180 Award for Energy Business Utility Warehouse shows its commitment to supporting women in the workplace. Employees who have struggled to get help with menopausal symptoms in other places they've worked have found it here. I think you feel a little bit, you can feel a little bit invisible at times um, and that you get written off after a certain age. And um, I think the fact that lots of women in their 40s and 50s are still having really good careers and still really want to achieve and, and add value in the workplace. Um, and I think it's the acknowledgement that, you know, if you are um, going through some symptoms or you, you are struggling at work, that actually you still feel wanted and valued and that you get the relative, relative support so that we can still be at our best. That's exactly the kind of understanding that Head of People Operations Liam Thompson tries to achieve. On a personal level, really important to me to learn more about the biological transitions that women go through um, because I know that we have a, a huge number of women that work for UW. So learning about menopause, uh, creating content alongside an external provider, supporting Q&A sessions, and also providing some one-to-one -one coaching support to some of our people leaders, typically who've been men, um, has been really important to me. Thank you very much for taking your time out of your busy uh, schedules to learn a little bit about menopause. Aston University are holding menopause workshops targeted at men. Why are you interested in menopause? Oh, well, I am because obviously I manage quite a large team of clean operatives and predominantly 80% of them are ladies and that's obviously when I started to sort of realise I need to learn more about the menopause. Alongside the facts and figures, practical demonstrations. Uh, if I can ask you first to sure. stand up um, and we're going to put this on. The Meno Vest is designed to show men what it feels like to experience hot flushes. If I'm hot, I would be getting hot and tired and sweaty. I'd probably look like a gibbering wreck. So what you've just described is quite classic in terms of people losing their confidence and starting to think, I'm not quite up to the job. And it's through these types of workshops Aston University is helping male as well as female managers become menopause allies. At Lloyd's Banking Group, they've made great strides since their menopause promise was launched in 2021, with menopause awareness now being one of the group's biggest health and well-being topics. They're aiming to have 50% of their senior roles filled by women by 2025, and they want to encourage them to stay with the business. Everyone has a role to play in that, including men. Mark Dixon was approached by a team member who needed help. She talked about how some managers have been dismissive before and that wasn't my approach or intention. I think for me it was more about listening to that colleague um, and empathising with that colleague around you know, what, what support could we offer uh, to make her working environment easier for her. We've got to start listening to our, our female colleagues and, and how we can support them. But it's not just about educating men. With women frequently reporting not being listened to or having their symptoms misdiagnosed, it's clear that some medical professionals also need support in this area. I um, didn't really know what was happening to me. I came back from a lovely holiday and had the end of holiday blues. And uh, 
just thought I need to go to the doctor, was offered antidepressants, um, had a blood test, was given thyroxine, and I thought this isn't right. Aston University is making sure that education on the menopause is also taught at their new medical school. It is an area that has been ignored and women there have really raw deal when we come to the post-reproductive uh, time. There is more emphasis on maybe actual menstrual disorders. We know we are living longer and this means that maybe half or third of their life is actually falling in the post-reproductive time and that needs more attention. Now the menopause is being openly and seemingly endlessly discussed, it's easy to become confused and stressed by everything you hear. For example, would it help if women were told of alternatives for HRT if their prescription is in short supply? There was an increased demand on HRT products, in particular to certain products, the gel preparations. And as a result, the demand was more than what was available. Just knowing that the product that you use may be in short supply, but there's an alternative that can fill a gap. We're not suggesting that women necessarily change their HRT forever, but just having access to something as a stopgap, I think, makes women less likely to panic. And if prescribed HRT, most women will have a combined dosage of oestrogen and progesterone, but can testosterone also have a role to play, even though it's not yet licensed for women on the NHS? It has a beneficial effect in improving low libido and low sexual drive that may be associated with the menopause transition. And for that, in that context, we would say it's an effective intervention. In an NHS setting, we are using products that are licensed for use in men, for women, and that comes with difficulties because the patient information leaflet is geared up towards men. And I think in the future, hopefully, we will see a product licensed on the NHS for women. If women do have questions about the menopause, the first port of call should always be their GP or an online trusted source of information, such as the British Menopause Society, and talk to a trusted friend or work colleague. It's no longer a dirty, whispered word, and that was what we always hoped for. Never sit in silence because there's always somebody here to help. I'm a 52 year old woman and I'm menopausal. So I would say to the me back then is embrace it, don't fight it and get help sooner. Thank you for watching, continuing the conversation. We hope you enjoyed this programme. All of our reports are available to view on the British Menopause Society website. The details are on the screen now. From me and the team at ITM Business, thank you for watching, goodbye.